Susan, let me start with um, how easy is it to become an organ donor? Well, that's a great question, Tim. Thank you for asking. So, you know, LifeSource, we're the organization that manages organ donation for the state of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So it's our responsibility to make every donation opportunity count. So it is very easy for individuals to register as a donor. You can simply check the box on your driver's license. You can go online and register. Um, or in the state of Minnesota, you can also register on your hunting and fishing license. And that is your documentation that says that you want to be a donor and that upon your death, you want to help other people in need. Okay, back up a second. I did not know about the hunting and fishing yes. license. Mm -hmm. This is unusual, isn't it? It is becoming more usual. In 2012, the state of Minnesota was the first state in the country to add donor registration to the hunting and fishing license. Um, and really, they looked at it from the Department of Natural Resources. This is about a legacy. And often when we're fishing, we pass on that legacy of fishing and hunting to our children. And donation is about legacy and passing on our gifts to those in need. So we were, uh, the state of Minnesota was a leader in this. So in the case of the Bowers, Mm -hmm. They were not registered organ donors until their son uh, needed a kidney. And they both went back and just said, yes, we, we need to sign our driver's license. But for those people who, who already have their driver's license, did not sign it, want to make that decision, and don't want to have to go back to driver vehicle services mm -hmm. and stand in line, what should they do? Yeah, well, that's a great question. Thank you. You know, at LifeSource, we really want to make sure that everybody has information about donation and that they have a means to register if that is something they wish to do. So there are a couple ways you can do it. You can simply go online, go to our website, life-source.org, and it will share how you can register online to donate. Um, it just takes a couple minutes. Or if people are interested in registering to donate and they hunt and fish, they can make that decision when they get their hunting and fishing license. Mm -hmm. During the time of a crisis and emergency, mm -hmm. how does the medical staff at the hospital know whether a person is a donor or not? Mm -hmm. You know, it's actually the responsibility of life source to know if somebody's registered as a donor. So the hospital staff does not have access to that information. So when the hospital lets us know that there's a potential donor, life source will uh, look up whether it's the driver's license or the hunting and fishing license to determine if that individual had made that decision in their lifetime. And then it is Life Source who will share that information with the family and say, we see that your loved one chose to be a donor and we can work together, work in partnership with the family to honor that decision. How many people in Minnesota have checked off their driver's licenses? About 55% of Minnesotans have registered as donors on their driver's license. But interestingly, we see in national surveys that about 90% 90, 90 of people say donation is important. I'm going to say that again. Yeah, yeah. About 55% of Minnesotans have registered as donors on their driver's license. However, national surveys will show that 90% of people say donation is important and something that they support. There's a gap there. There's a gap there, yes. And what we hear is sometimes people don't register because they haven't really thought about it, um, or they're concerned that maybe their health conditions would exclude them from being able to donate. And what we want to make sure is that people know that anyone can register to donate. And if donation is something that's important to you, something you value, you should take the time to make those wishes known. So what, what are the barriers? Mm -hmm. Why well, don't we have more, <laughs> particularly with men, by the mm -hmm. way? Yes, that is true. Men are about 10% less likely than women to choose to register as a donor during their lifetime. And what we hear at LifeSource is that, again, some men, they haven't thought about it, or they have a misconception that maybe their health condition will preclude them from being a donor. Um, and really, those myths are not accurate. Um, we just really want to make sure that if people think donation is important, they register to donate. About 1% of people who die actually can be an organ donor. It's a very rare and precious gift. And so everybody who thinks it's important should really take that time to register as a donor because they can save people like Aiden and those who are waiting and who are in need of transplant. I want to get back to something you just said because it was, if, if I heard this right, only 1% of those who die? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yes. Can actually be an organ donor? Organ donation, yes. 
organ donation is a very rare and a very precious gift. So about 1% one, about 1 of individuals who die actually can be an organ donor. So that's why it's so important that we all say yes to donation because people like Aiden are depending on that generosity and that altruism and that gift of donation. Why 1%? So when an individual dies, um, to be an organ donor, they need to die in a hospital and on a ventilator. And the ventilator will keep the oxygen and the blood perfusing until the organs can be recovered um, and then sent to those who are waiting for a transplant, people like Aiden. And you know, I think it's important to think about what happens in the hospital during that time. As I said, Life Source, it's our privilege and our responsibility to make every donation opportunity count. So we work alongside and partnership with donor families. And so when somebody dies, um, we work with the family, we check if they had donor on the license and we support the family. Our team of experts does some wonderful things to support families. And one I would just really like to share with you. So when we have an organ donor, mm -hmm. this is really small, this is what we call a heartbeat in a bottle. And so our team will take the EKG from the donor print out their heartbeat, put it in a bottle, and give it to the family. So that the donor family, in the months and years following their loved one's donation, they can hold on to this and remember and honor their loved one. What kind of feedback have you gotten from that little gift? Mm -hmm. You know, this little gift has meant a great deal to families. I hope that it has provided them some comfort and, their strength, and some strength. Um, we Every year, LifeSource holds an event where we bring families together to remember their loved one. And many families bring this with. And it is something that they carry. They carry in their purse. They carry in their pocket. It's a very meaningful gift for them. All right. Susan, I think that's basically all the questions that I had. Is anything that I missed that we didn't talk about? No, I, you know, I think, Tim, the one thing to remember, we talked a lot about people registering. And at LifeSource, we know it is so important for people to document their decision to donate. We also encourage people to talk to their family so they know their decision. And we know firsthand from donor families that when they know their loved one's decision, it takes away that decision on them at that time. It means that they understand what their loved one wanted and they can honor that decision. It's critically important to share mm -hmm. your desires with your family. It's absolutely important and it's important to talk about it as a family um, and encourage your family members also to register as donors. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it.